During the 1980s, children in Britain began to tell police and social workers of horrific rituals. They described satanic ceremonies in which they said they were sexually abused. The so-called satanic panic wrecked families. The accusations were that we were sacrificing babies, sacrificing animals, burning people, taking babies off the street, taking animals off the street and just sacrificing them, cutting the throats, things like that, drinking the blood. The satanic panic destroyed the reputation of social workers and put children at greater risk from sexual abuse. There was a, a climate created of deep distrust of social workers. And that, of course, affects the practice of every social worker. And for any child who's caught in a sexual abuse network, that is extremely bad news. After the Cleveland affair, many British parents feared that to touch or cuddle their child could be seen as incestuous. An innocent home movie could be interpreted as obscene. Surely child sexual abuse could not be as widespread as some experts claimed. Satan had a good press in the 1980s. Stories of his influence were standard fodder for those who read the popular newspapers. Britain was fascinated by the quasi-occult. How we loved the devil, but how we underestimated his chaotic power. Those who were skeptical about the scale of child sexual abuse were soon stunned by the Broxtow case in Nottingham. Detective Superintendent Peter Coles led the investigation. I became involved around about Christmas 87 and set up a team to look at some of the disclosures that the children were making about uh, pretty horrific sexual abuse that they suffered at the hands of the extended family. The children told us stories of uh, horrific sexual abuse, of um, rape, buggery, indecent assault and physical assault and some terrible neglect. I think it was 24 children involved. We in fact arrested, uh, I think it was 11 people if I remember rightly. Searched the houses, etc., cetera, uh, bailed them, and then about a fortnight later we actually charged nine of them with all sorts of uh, offences of child abuse. Uh, they subsequently went to court and got convicted and all went to prison. Mr. Speaker, this was a particularly bad case of child abuse reported in the newspapers this morning. When uh, one of the judges heard it, he did acknowledge the excellent way in which the Nottingham Social Services Department handled this difficult case, and I'm very glad to follow that. After the children were taken into care, something strange happened. Their foster parents had been asked by the social workers to keep diaries of any further disclosures the children might make. Firstly, a four-year-old boy, then other children, began talking about parties with monsters, witches, and a big master. They started telling stories about themselves and other members of the family, having been taken to various big houses where they had been abused in what um, in those days was described as a satanic fashion and they talked of the devil, I think they referred to him as the Nestor and things like that. She's a child, she's not aware of the consequences. 
Ray Wire, a consultant to the police and social services on sex offenders, had originally advised the Nottingham social workers about the case. But his involvement didn't stop there. It must have been about four months later, there was a phone call left on my answer machine asking me if I knew anything about witchcraft. I subsequently went up to Nottingham uh, and spoke to the social workers. I said I won't say anything, I just like to hear what actually the children are saying. Um, and the foster parents with the social workers talked to me about the bizarre information they were actually giving. Neither the foster parents nor the social workers would take part in this film, but they did speak once. They described the children's disclosures shortly after the Broxtow case was over. She told us about groups of me, groups of people um, dancing round in witches' costumes, abusing her. There was a, at that time, it, she said it was a doll on the floor in the middle of this ring that they had to jump on it, and it, just things like that. And the, the, in a church and drinking blood and just all together. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Well, police were reporting to me and social services were getting uh, very concerned about allegations of satanic abuse. And that involved allegations of uh, murdered babies. I assessed the state of the evidence to decide what should be prosecuted by way of established criminal offences. And that's what we did. And in a sense, satanic abuse was a diversion which was in grave danger at times of taking if you like, our eye off the ball. We said, look, this is what the children are saying. This is very clearly describing ceremonies in which children are abused. And they immediately said, there is no witchcraft in Nottingham. Uh, I don't want to hear about this. Um, you'll lose the case for us. Just concentrate on the sexual abuse. We don't want to know about anything else. They were family get-togethers of which the adults would consume quite a lot of drink and the children were passed around as sexual playthings for the adults to abuse. During the investigation, the children's bizarre disclosures were apparently corroborated by members of the family and friends, one of whom later retracted her statement, though not this one. He didn't even weigh it. He just said, I'll sacrifice his baby. It's his throat. Meanwhile, the children's disclosures just went on and on. She talked about a house with a big swimming pool and cameras, four poster beds, things like that. Well, they came off a very poor estate. They'd be picked up by car, um, and I'd, I'd say, well, well, who told you to get in the car? You shouldn't get in strange cars, should you? Who told you get, to get in? My mum told me to get in. And then they'd go around and pick other children up, and then they'd go somewhere. Where? It was further disclosures by the children that disturbed the social workers and convinced them that abuse had happened, not just on the Broxtow estate, but elsewhere. One of the children mentioned being in a strange room with two men and a woman where she was sexually abused and photographed. Every time there was any child porn seized, whether it was in Nottinghamshire or anywhere else, um, the officers that uh, worked with me went to have a look at it to see whether any of our children were on it, and of course they're not. As a result of further allegations, the police were forced to widen their investigations. I came under considerable pressure to actually look at the satanic aspects of it once again. We then instigated Operation Gollum, which was to look purely at the satanic aspects. And we actually employed um, what we call our operational support department, um, which are trained searchers of houses. Each of those had a member of the investigative team with them. And when we visited the houses of the various people that we arrested, we virtually took the houses to bits. The houses of the families had already been searched during the first investigation. Now the police retraced some of their steps looking for evidence of satanic ritual. 
by the time of Gollum, we were not just looking at Satanism. It involved human sacrifices and things like that. So we were obviously, then you're talking about murders. If you think of the notion of persons burying bodies in the gardens, having a sheep in the garden, which they then sacrifice, the houses are very close together. It would be very, very difficult to do either of those. If you sacrifice a sheep, there's an awful lot of blood for a start. If you burn a sheep, which this was simply stuck on a bonfire in the back garden of this uh, alleged house, um, it doesn't work like that. You know, anybody who's been to a barbecue will know how long it takes to roast a sheep and then you eat it. You don't just sort of disappear. Now the search widened to the whole of Nottingham, to local landmarks like Woolerton Hall, where abuse was alleged to have taken place. This had actually taken part in a four-poster bed in Woolerton Hall itself, and we made inquiries of the staff. Nobody had ever reported finding anything or seeing anything. Allegations that Woolerton Hall was connected in some way to nearby posh houses had to be investigated. We actually made inquiries about a number of these houses up here because they were also meant to be connected to Woolerton Hall via uh, tunnels. There are no tunnels that lead from here to Woolerton Park. There is no connection whatsoever with any of the people here, with any of the, either the abusers or the abused children. One of the last stops in this epic search was at a Nottingham cemetery, or rather, beneath it. Police officers now plumbed the depths for evidence of satanic ritual. Yeah, this is one of the many places that we investigated. One of the children allegedly was scared when we drove past on uh, with uh, one of the foster parents. As you can see, it's a very eerie, haunted sort of looking place. But the reality is it's a cut through uh, tunnel in uh, one of the main old cemeteries of Nottingham where the hearses used to drive through. There is no sign of uh, any sort of satanic rituals or, or mass orgies. It was habitual ab abuse which may have had some ritual in it, in the sense that if, if they had a family party, then the children would get abused. If that's a ritual, that's a ritual. But, if it, but to say that it was satanic and um, organized from the outside, then I was absolutely, totally convinced then, and am now, that it never was. With relationships between police and social workers in tatters, an internal joint police and social services report was commissioned to find out the truth of the matter. There is no evidence of satanic ritual abuse in the Broxtow case or its aftermath. There is no evidence of any other organized abuse in the Broxtow case or its aftermath. But the report was leaked. A damning picture of hysterical social workers and their advisors began to permeate the press. The report said Ray Wire may have put satanic ideas in the minds of the foster mothers. They need us somehow to be the person who made Nottingham satanic, and it, it's just... I, well, I think it was daft, was it not, for the fact that all of these things had major effects upon the whole future inquiries, that somehow it was overzealous social workers trying to get bizarre information from children, and it was not like that, certainly in my case. <laughs> At the time of the satanic panic, the Christian fundamentalist evangelical movement was beginning to present a new profile. Their belief that satanic covens were widespread did little to bring calm. At child protection meetings up and down the country, their leaders spread the message. But they weren't the only ones who were convinced that covens existed along with the sacrifice of babies and the degradation of children. As Operation Gollum wound down, the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children circulated this document to child protection teams, 
It was a list of what to look out for in a case of suspected satanic ritual abuse, so-called satanic indicators. From the experiences of team members within the NSPCC, child protection workers, and from information obtained from other parts of the country, there is strong evidence to suggest that ritualistic satanic abuse of children, including the murder of infants and babies, does exist. Today, the NSPCC describes the document as a discussion report to promote debate within the organization. But such reports undoubtedly brought credibility to Satan's role. And he was about to make another dramatic appearance in Rochdale.